All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Twins Daily Post Game Pint. I am Nick Nelson of Twins Daily. It is Saturday, August 22nd, 2020, and we are going to be discussing the Twins finally getting off the old schneid at Kauffman Stadium, 7-2 victory. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining us. Uh, everyone who's in the chat room wanted to let you know um, you're more than welcome and encouraged to join the discussion here. Uh, there's a chat function where you can enter um, some questions you have. Also, uh, a fun little twist on tonight's show. Um, if anyone wants to enter the name of a, an exotic cocktail, uh, the panelists will try to work it into their responses or discussion at some point, and uh, we'll award a point to uh, whoever does so in the most clever of fashions. Um, so uh, also there's a Q&A uh, function. Uh, you can use that to submit a question if you want to any, have anything you want us to talk about regarding tonight's game or the Twins in general. Um, and there'll be some polls popping up so you guys can vote on who's got the best answers for certain things. And uh, we will award a post-game pint poobah at the end of the show. Um, so thank you for everyone uh, joining us tonight here on the Saturday night. Uh, let's uh, get acquainted with our panelists for the evening. Uh, uh, I think you guys know these these folks, uh, a couple of Twins Daily regulars, inclu including the uh, the old poobah of Twins Daily himself, uh, Mr. Johnny Bonus. How are you doing tonight, John? Are you uh, enjoying a fine beer after this victory? Got a uh, Finnegan's uh, Hopcomb Double IPA out of a Herkimer pint glass, which I think is now under. I think they just went under about a month ago. So, yes, I am enjoying a fine uh, pint at the post-game pint. Very nice, very nice. And uh, we, we also have Cody Perkle with us. Uh, Cody, how are you doing tonight, man? Are you, uh, are you having a beverage on this fine Saturday evening? Yeah, uh, doing, doing good. I've got the uh, Pride and Joy Wisconsin. I've got the uh, Spotted Cow tonight. Um, nice. Haven't had one of those in a while. Haven't been able to go over the state line to grab them. So uh, finally back on the Spotted Cow. We're going to need a lot more cocktails in the chats. We're going to be working on that. All right. So let's get those uh, let's get uh, those get those cocktails in the chat chat function. Let's go, guys. Yes, indeed. So I myself am drinking just about to crack open a Summit Saga, uh, nice. a very solid IPA from a local brewery in Summit. And you know, I, I think it's it's fitting because uh, the Twins, uh, it's been quite a saga, but at long last they have reached the summit with a victory at Coffin Stadium, <laughs> oh, the first of the you. first of the season. I thought about that for like a half hour before we started. So that's oh really yeah, all you've I been planning that for weeks. Yeah, for sure, right. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's take a quick look at the um, the uh, stat cast here. If you ever go to baseballsavant.mlb.com, they have game feeds during the games, and it has all this information. I highly recommend uh, checking it out. Uh, pulling it up on screen here, you can see the Twins winning seven to two. Uh, both teams had ten hits. Um, it was in very many ways sort of a, a revenge game from last night. I thought, you know, the Twins won by the same score they lost by last night. Um, you know, in, on Friday it was the Royals hitting a three-run homer before the Twins were able to record an out. Uh, and tonight it was Eddie Rosario returning the favor. Uh, so three, three RBIs for Rosario. And, you know, even Miguel Sano, I think he might have taken a chunk out of their ballpark, actually. So <laughs> really just the Twins – the Twins exacting their revenge in, in a major way. Uh, WPA leaders for the night, Tyler Duffy with that huge relief appearance, uh, relieving Dobnak, who had another solid outing. I don't think he was quite at the top of his game, but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. Alex Gordon and Eddie Rosario also up there. Um, Miguel Sano with a monster freaking blast there, 115.8 miles per hour. Hardest hit ball by a twin this season. We'll talk a little bit about him as well. Uh, but before we uh, start to dive in too deep, uh, let's talk about our takeaways. Um, John, what, what's your big takeaway from tonight's game? Yeah, uh, you know, it's not actually not from tonight's game, but uh, it's a little bit of a bigger view from the standings in general. I don't know if you guys are taking a look at the American League standings right now, but the eight teams that are going to make the playoffs are already set. I mean, it's pretty much set. The, uh, the ninth best team in the American League is the Baltimore Orioles, who are two games underneath 500. Uh, every other team is, you know, several games over 500. The 10th best team is the team we just beat, the Royals. So if you think, you know, <laughs> as much bad news as we got over the last, what, 48 hours, 72 hours about Twins injuries and them needing to get ready and such, yeah, it's nice to get the win. But even more so, you know, again, in the grand scheme of things, this is looking more and more like a we've got five weeks of exhibition baseball kind of going on here, and it's just a matter of whether or not you know, where they're going to get seated one through eight. They already have a four and a half game lead over the ninth best team in the American League. And 
well, there's some advantage to being in the top four. And, you know, maybe that is a concern. Uh, you know, the bottom line is this team is already postseason bound. Yeah, well, and in their quest to win the American League Central, tonight's win was a big one. Um, Detroit, of course, got back on the winning wagon against uh, – or, uh, sorry, Cleveland got on the winning wagon against against Detroit, of course, a 6-1 victory. And last I checked, the red-hot Chicago White Sox were beating the Cubs again. So uh, not a lot of clearance at the top of the AL Central. Cody, what's, uh, what's your big takeaway from tonight's game, my man? Yeah, uh, I think my big takeaway is uh, I want to be I want to be greedy going into tomorrow. Uh, obviously, a nice uh, offensive game with the uh, run scoring finally uh, finally coming through. Uh, I want to see the same thing again tomorrow. Um, it it seemed a little bit still for a little while in the game tonight, like it was kind of still in question. You know, we had to bring in Duffy and everything. The offense didn't really break through until the later innings, and um, I think I think doing that again tomorrow would be absolutely huge. I think that would uh, – another day of just kind of saving our big arms for that Cleveland series as a result of our offense basically just going off like they did again today, um, I think that would be huge um, and just kind of positioning ourselves for the series that really matters now. Yeah, a uh, good old-fashioned beatdown would be nice tomorrow. They have had kind of a um, tough time backing up those offensive – explosions it seems like and you know yesterday a great example um you know huge game on thursday then they come out really flat the following day so um you know and they've got a chance they've had a tough time against kansas city this year but they've got a chance in this last game of the season series to finish with a 5-5 split so we'll take that i guess as, as rough as things have looked at some point right um so my takeaway um I'm going to pull this up here because uh, I, I think what it was really nice to see was the twins get good pitching results without, um, you know, they had two of their biggest pitchers really kind of came through for them today. And I don't think either of them really looked that great. You know, Dobnak was not so much on top of his game. Although as you look at the pitch chart here, one thing that just always impresses me. And again, here, uh, the top half of the strike zone, just nothing. I mean, three pitches in the entire game up in the top half of the strike zone, pounding in the lower part. And uh, he did give up a home run, and Alex Gordon was able to golf one. But uh, I thought it was another another good game, and it was interesting to see Rocco Baldelli uh, stick with him there and send him out for the sixth. Um, you know, I think a lot of the time there's been a lot of hesitation to send him out for another look at the batting order. You had Jorge Soler leading off that inning. And it was unfortunate for Dobnak because, I mean, this weird catcher's interference thing and then uh, a little bleeder ground ball that gets through and then he gets pulled. Uh, he pitched well. I thought he pitched well enough to get, get through the sixth and maybe even another inning. And then Duffy, too, a huge inning for Duffy, um, you know, one of the key moments of the game. But look at these pitch locations. I mean, he was all, all over the place, just totally wild. Um, so, But he was still able to get the job done. And that's just, you know, Duffy's a phenomenal player and just one of the top relievers in the league proving it again. Uh, that he's able to come in here and, and deliver a huge appearance, um, you know, e even without really maybe his best command. Uh, what did you guys think about about Dobnak and, and, and Tyler Duffy and sort of those key moments in the game there? Uh, Cody, let's start with you. Yeah, uh, Dobnak in particular, I really feel for him because, I mean, what is this, his second or third start against KC in a row? Um, you, you talk about guys getting scouting reports as they kind of stick in the league a little bit longer from all these teams. Imagine facing the same team over and over and over again. They, I mean, they went into that game knowing exactly what he throws, when he throws it. Um, and, I mean, he still did a pretty pretty damn good job. I mean, it, that one inning, I think it was the fifth, he had uh, all those base runners on like a 56-mile-an-hour like a exit velocity hit and like a 66-mile-an-hour exit velocity and, I mean, you know, weird stuff happened, the catcher's interference, all that kind of stuff. I think Dobnik's fine. I think we're going to see more of the same from him as he moves on to teams that haven't seen him yet this year. I think the Royals are finally just starting to get comfortable with him, especially like Alex Gordon. I said I'm, I'm sick of seeing Alex Gordon. He's just – he's a Twins killer. He always has been. I'm tired of it. And, I mean, he's just dialed in on – he's he's dialed in on Dobnik the last couple of starts now. Um, so, I think Dobnik will be fine. Yeah, and, and I mean, you know, you mentioned that he had some bad luck in the sixth inning. He has some bad luck in the fifth inning, too. You know, he were, he really was kind of cruising along up until the fifth inning. And then, you know, there was a couple balls that bled through or, you know, found a, you know, went down the line on the third base. It was just it was one of those things where it seemed like everything seemed to kind of be finding a hole uh, in general for him. But for me, the player of the game was, was Duffy. Uh, you know, Duffy, um, Duffy came into a tough situation. And like you said, did not have his best stuff. 
and still managed to kind of fight his way through it. Now, he got a lot of help from Alex Avila on that. We should uh, probably throw some love Avila's way as well. But uh, I just took a look at Fangress. Uh, the WPA leader for the game was Tyler Duffy, getting two, <laughs> by getting two outs in that critical situation uh, when you know, things were legitimately dicey. Um, that ended up being the, sort of the pivot point of the game. That's where the game was won or, won or lost. Yeah, that was that was a huge moment. Um, and yeah, you're right. I mean, he there was all, all the leverage right there, and the WPA shows it. Um, so you take us into the next discussion, which will be the game MVP. Um, before that, I'll just run the poll here. Um, you guys can sh- you guys can vote on which uh, take of the night you liked best. Um, mine was about Dobnak and Duffy. John was about the bunching in the a- American League. Uh, and Cody, Cody, remind me what was your what was your kind of distillation? Oh, my takeaway. Uh, yeah. Just staying greedy with the with the offense coming, nice right. offensive breakout coming back tomorrow. Yeah. All right. So get your votes in on that, and we'll talk about uh, MVP of the night. Um, so John's got Tyler Duffy. Certainly a good argument to be made there. Cody, who who are you taking? Who's who do you think was the biggest uh, factor in tonight's win for the Twins? Yeah, I'll uh, I, I can't disagree with Duffy, but I'll uh, I'll give Miguel Sano some love. Uh, that huge home run that was insane to watch. That thing just flew out of that park. And then obviously that 0-2 hit to really put the game away with the bases loaded there. I was kind of starting to worry that we weren't going to get anything out of that. It was kind of a gift of an inning, a few walks there, and Sano kind of stayed strong through that at bat and got a got a mistake pitch and drove it right back up the middle, which is always great to see from him. And three RBIs is never never not too shabby, you know. I also think it's worth pointing out that 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 mistake pitch that he hit, he hit that thing hard. I mean, it looked a little bit like maybe it found a hole. No, it was 105, 106 degree, 106 uh, miles per hour off the bat. It was like a grasshopper going off a hot skillet. It went, could not have gone faster through that infield. Uh, so, uh, a really good, uh, yeah, a, a number of a number of very good, uh, very good at bats by Sano tonight. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, like I mentioned, um, well, first I'll, I'll mention that John, uh, in a tight vote between you and Cody, John wins uh, with uh, Tyler Duffy as his response for that. Uh, so he's got the first first point in our Puba challenge tonight. Um, I, of course, got very few votes because I suck. But uh, I'll go with uh, – I, I do want to talk a little bit about Sano because um, he's a been a big topic for me this year. But uh, first I will lay out my, my MVP of the night. I'm going to go with Alex Avila. You mentioned how big he was. Um, I see Devlin in the uh, Q&A here mentioned, can we talk about how crucial Alex Avila was tonight? At least 12 blocks despite two catcher's interference calls. He's been so critical with Garver being out and struggling and Jeffers being young and inexperienced. Maybe the most underrated offseason signing. Um, I can't disagree with that. I mean, you know, That's he didn't do really point. much at the yeah. plate tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, with Garver going down, I mean, even when Garver was struggling, it was just so nice to have Avila to be able to plug in there pretty much every other night and get some production. Um, and he's working with, you know, Duffy was, was like we mentioned, just, just really having a hard time with his breaking ball, a lot of stuff in the dirt. Um, and any of those getting past Avila could have been a, a game changer, you know, um, Dobnak too was a little more wild than we're used to seeing him. And uh, so I think, you know, Avila, Avila was a big factor tonight, and he's been a huge factor this year. I mean, he's just a great – he has great at-bats, um, and he's just a steady veteran and just a, just really doing a lot on the defensive end. So, um, right, Let's also we'll not up. forget after that inning where he was digging balls out of the dirt for the entire half inning and keeping Duffy from you know, letting run, uh, runs come run, uh, running home, he led off the next inning with a walk that got the rally started that ended up making it a uh, from a 4-2 game to a 7-2 game. Yeah, and I- – Absolutely. Um, and he was pulled uh, at one point for a pinch runner. We've seen that a couple times now. Um, and that's, that's something that Rocco's going to definitely have to balance, you know, in these close games because Avila is, is a key player, um, you know, catching those late innings and being there. And Jeffers has looked solid, but he's very young and very inexperienced. Um, so when you're pulling Avila out of that game for those late innings, uh, there's definitely a trade-off there. Um, I, I, wondered the a little bit, there. I, wondered, I wondered a little bit if that was an act of mercy. After Vila had, dropped, had blocked about twelve of those uh, Tyler Duffy things and caught one in the neck, uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, not, yeah. Yeah, R- 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 was like, maybe we just give you like the next three innings off, baby. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, this is a good time yeah, yeah. to maybe we pull somebody else in for you. So uh, you know, feel free to, to pl- <laughs> place your vote on the MVP of the night. Cody went with Miguel Sano. Uh, John goes with Tyler Duffy. I went with Alex Avila. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about Sano. Uh, that was, as I mentioned, the hardest hit ball by a Twins player this year. 
Um, it was the second hardest exit velocity um, for any Twins home run in the StatCast era dating back to 2015. It was clobbered, but it was not really out of character for Sano at all. I tweeted earlier tonight um, that he has six of the or five of the six hardest hit balls by a twin this year, uh, with Nick Nelson Cruz being the only other uh, name in that list. And three of those are from within the past three days. Uh, so he is cranking <laughs> the ball. He's starting wow. to see the ball better. He's striking. He's still striking out a lot, and there was still an ugly strikeout tonight, and that's going to happen. But um, he's walking more. He's seeing the ball better. I'm I'm geeking about Miguel Sano. What do you guys think? Are you start, Are you feeling as excited as I am about this guy? Yeah, well, I'm, I mean, <laughs> we've seen him go from super cold to super hot, you know, at the immediately. And we saw it especially last year. And it feels like we're maybe seeing another another turn like that this year. And this offense could really, really use a big dose of Sano. Uh, there's no question about it. That, you know, we, we were seeing uh, – we've had so many injuries. We've got, uh, you know, a lot of Adrians in the lineup. A lot of uh, uh, Valeras. We had a lot of uh, we had some uh, Lamont Wade today. Uh, you know, Cruz was missing today. Uh, I would love to see Miguel Sano, uh, you know, hit well enough so that he's moving him with his way up to the uh, fourth or fifth spot in this lineup. And they, we had what uh, Marwin Gonzalez hitting fourth and Jake Cave hitting fifth. Uh, you know, we could use a Sano in the middle of that. We could use a hot Sano to plug into those spots. Yeah, no question. Cody, what's what's your feeling about Sano? Are you uh, are you feeling pretty confident that he's ready to take over here? I mean, the last week has been a pretty good indicator, right? Yeah, I, I feel really good. I think it was a little over a week ago. Um, he drove a double to right field off the wall at Target Field, yeah. and I just thought that was just. I mean, I told I told myself that's got to be the start of it, right? That's got to be that's got to be the beginning of it. That's that's what they always say about these these big sluggers when they're in a funk. You know, they they drive it the other way. That's a good sign. And sure enough, I mean, the last 10 days, he's been, I think, hitting above 300 and stuff. Um, you know, he'll, he's, he's more than inclined to, to drive that inside pitch out of Kauffman Stadium when they throw it. But, I mean, seeing him drive it up the middle today, too, is a really fantastic sign. He's, he's kind of using the entire field. Um, you know, he's still going to swing and miss through some sliders off the plate and stuff like that. But, I mean, the fact that he's willing to just hit the ball wherever it goes, wherever it's thrown, and it's going to be probably over 100 miles an hour, uh, you can't hate that, and I, I think he's going to be uh, on a on a heater here for the for the Cleveland series and and kind of moving forward. Yeah, I sure hope so. Well, on that note, uh, the voters have spoken, and uh, Cody, your pick of Miguel Sano for game MVP is the winner. Uh, I think that's very justifiable and, and great point. I think we all felt the same when we saw that uh, rocket double off the right field wall uh, at Target Field, and also. I mean, he's had a couple too. I mean, to your point, when he falls into that trying too hard to pull trap, uh, I think that's when he gets into trouble. Um, he's had a couple like ground ball doubles that were just like shots, like past the shortstop that rolled all the way to the wall. Um, those are really good to see too. I mean, he doesn't have to try to lift everything. Like you said, I mean, just go with the pitch, right? Yeah. And I mean, he's also been playing decent, I mean, decent first base defense, which is something that we were worried about. Um, and I don't know if we are necess- justifiably worried about it, but he's been he's been handling it very very easily. Um, yeah, I, I just feel like uh, Sano is at the point now where, you know, if they can you know trust him a little bit more, and put him in a little more high leverage situations, uh, I'm I'm going to be uh, you know I was I was disappointed to see him batting sixth today instead of fourth today, um, and that's not because I have anything against Marwin Gonzalez. Marwin Gonzalez is not just a sidecar player. My, Marwin Gonzalez has become a a heart of this order kind of play uh, for, for this team, uh, a really critical piece. But, you know, w- when you've got Sano, you've got Cruz out of the lineup, you got Rosario hitting in the three spot, I would love to see Sano uh, a little further up in the order. Yeah, you know, um, you mentioned uh, Marwin Gonzalez, and, and one thing that's really hit me is how frustrated this guy's getting with the umpires. We saw him get kicked out the other night. Uh, another just just barking after a after a low pitch was called a strike tonight. Um, I see Scott mentioned in the three chat. This time. It was only strike two this time. Yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah so he so he stayed in the game. So that was good. I see uh, Scott mentioned in the chat. Dick Bramer calls for Robo Umps tonight. I don't know if I heard that, but um, he said, "Is that a first consistent theme this season?" I mean. The umpiring has been awful this year. I, I, it's, I mean, hasn't it? It seems like it's been worse than usual. I mean, there's been a lot of really, really bad calls. Um, is, are you guys changing? I, I'm not like a robot umps person. I actually would have liked to see them this year because 
it seems like a good time to test it. And I think it would be maybe a little safer to not have umpires on the field, but I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if I'm moving any closer towards it, but it's, it is, it is draining to watch so many missed calls. Like, Cody, what do you think? What's, what's your stance on it? Yeah, gosh, I want to say it was uh, JD Cameron with twins daily tweeted something out today. Um, made the observation that I hadn't really noticed before. It seems like we have Jerry meals behind the plate, like every single game. I don't know what the deal is. He, he does, like he raised a good question. What's the deal with the umpires kind of being repeated over and over again? If it's like a, if it's a regional thing that we're kind of getting the same well, crews over and over again. I think it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I noticed that too. Cause we had the same crew for the last series. They must be, I mean, it makes sense to keep the same guys yeah. together. Right. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah. And it, it does. And not to have them travel. I understand, but it seems like, uh, yeah, the strike zones have just been so bad and it's just, it's, it's crazy. You, you're saying, wow, umpiring is really bad this year. And then, yeah, I didn't think about it. Turns out we've just kind of had the same umpires almost every game, it seems like. And I mean, I don't know if it's just that, that kind of umpiring style. I can't say I'm one to really, really know what kind of style any particular umpire has, but maybe, maybe that's just Jerry Mills' thing. I don't know. But well, we're also, um, yeah. we're, now, we're now four or five weeks into the season. Like it shouldn't be something like, oh, they're in still, still in spring training mode anymore. The batters aren't in spring training right. mode anymore. You would think the umpires would have uh, figured things out. I kind of wonder to some extent if, uh, if the fact that there's less crowd noise and more white noise means that they're just hearing the dugouts a little bit more and maybe that's screwing with them a little bit. You know, they're just maybe hearing the barking more than they usually do. Um, yeah, I, you know, they, the fact that we also get to see that strike zone on the, on the, um, on the TV maybe also – you know, we certainly didn't get to see. I, I don't remember. You know, I, I presume we saw that as much as we at last year as we are this year, but you know, previous years, further and further back, you didn't get to see that as much. So it was maybe a little bit tougher to make some of those calls. But yeah, it's been really frustrating. Yeah. And uh, and and it uh, feels like a it feels like a um, an unforced error at this point. You know, it seems like we should be able to try and come up with something a little bit better that's going to be a, provide a little bit more consistency and just sort of take that somewhat infuriating aspect out of the, out of the game a little. Yeah. Um, TC now mentions in the chat, there are also uh, about like first 10 first time MLB umps because of the opt outs. Um, that is a valid point and something worth considering as well. Um, Scott in the Q and a mentioned, it seemed like a solid game for Wade jr. Um, who of course was just recalled uh, with Byron Buxton going on the DL Lamont Wade uh, also seemed like continuing struggles for cave. I think we'll see more Wade in the near future as the hotter hand. Um, we talked a little bit last night on the show about how, you know, so a lot of these rough offensive performances for the Twins, um, it seems like the innings just kind of fly by a, a lot of really bad at bats. Um, and, and we were noticing, you know what I mean? No Jorge Polanco in the lineup, no Luis Arias in the lineup. You notice it, right? So um, tonight they were back in the lineup and, and Wade was in there too. And that gives you three guys who really are known for their patience and consistently taking great at bats. Um, and so I do think, you know, they're going to give Cave plenty of chances to get get back on the horse, but uh, I do think that with with what Wade Jr. brings to the table with his patience um, and his ability to take those at bats, especially on a matchup to matchup basis, you know, if you're going against like a power pitcher, I definitely would like to see uh, some more of Lamont Wade. Uh, John, what do you think? What's your feeling about that sort of dichotomy? One thing that I noticed is that with the night in the night in which Eddie Rosario was going to be DHing and they had two outfield, outfield spots open, they put still put Cave in center field and Lamont, Lamont Wade in left. Yeah. Um, and that made me wonder if, you know, they, if they just view Cave as a sufficiently better option defensively over Wade. Um, and then, you know, if you're facing a right-handed hitter, you know, Jake Cave can hit right-handed, right, I mean, if you're facing right-handed pitchers, Jake Cave can hit right-handed pitchers. So I, I, I kind of wonder exactly when Lamont Wade's going to get his chance. You know, I don't think it's going to be versus right-handers. And, um, and eventually it feels like, you know, Cave will get, I mean, Cave has only had what, 43 at bats or something like that this season so far. It's, you know, I, I think they've got a little bit more faith in him and probably justifiably so. So I'm, I'm not particularly optimistic about Wade getting a lot more time, even with Bucks than I. Yeah, Cave has shown to be a, a real streaky hitter, I think. I remember in the middle of last summer, uh, he was really struggling, horrible numbers, and there's a lot of people, you know, get him, send him down, get rid of him, this guy stinks. And I was like, All right, well, let's, let's give it a little time. And then, of course, he hit like 400 in August. So um, what do you think, Cody? What, what do you want to see sort of as the, the outfield uh, playing time allotment going forward until Buxton returns? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it kind of depends on the lineup. I think uh, I think tonight is a perfect opportunity to get Wade in there against the righty. I just don't know that we're going to see that a whole lot when when Kepler and Rosario are starting actually in the outfield, like John said. Um, that being said, I think that's more of the case because I think I think Caves just kind of got a head start on Wade. I think I think Cave kind of had those hot streaks the last couple of years that you talked about. Uh, he's a fast dude, um, not a particularly well grading fielder, but um, you know you like speed in center field. I understand that. Um, I, I actually was just talking to I can't remember who on Twitter tonight. I think the Twins were dangling uh, Cave a little bit this off season. I think there were some rumors about them talking to Miami about him, um, which I didn't mind all that much, just because I actually do like Wade, just as kind of a complimentary to what we already have in the outfield. You can only have so many left-handed hitting outfielders, and Wade's kind of got that plate approach that's a little bit different from everyone else. Um, so I don't know if the Twins will try to do that again in the future with Cave being a little bit older, um, at least than Wade. He's not old, but older than Wade. Um, I'd love to see Wade get an opportunity, but I don't really know how that's going to happen with Cave still here. Yeah, we're gonna accept, we're gonna, like we're we discussed gonna... last night, it's tough. Good. It's tough with uh with with four four left-handed outfielders, right? I mean, there's not not a lot of platoon components to that equation, right? John, what were you gonna say? Uh, speaking of speaking of left-handed outfielders, we're getting savage a little bit in the chats about leaving Rosario off of our players of the game uh, options, which is a pretty good point. Oh my god, he yeah, gave a, he gave a three-run <laughs> lead in the first inning. Uh, uh, yeah, fair point. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll get to that. <laughs> it happened so long ago, I forgot. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got sucked into the Avila narrative. Uh, we we, we also um, we also left Dobnik off of there. Who you know uh, oh, quieted yeah. uh, quieted the oh. rotation has been you know quietly uh, excellent all year. So I mean, this this felt a little bit like a uh, felt like a midseason game, which it is. You know, kind of a quiet, almost workmanlike win. There were a couple of key you know uh, pieces places that uh, things went the Twins' way, and they ended up winning it. But there was lots of lots of credit to go around in tonight's game. It's a good sign that there's so many choices. Yeah, I see a hand raise here. I. I see a hand raised here, Devlin. I'm going to try to try to bring you in here. Um, if you want to speak, I believe you can right now, my man. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Devlin. Hey, how's it going, dude? Are you good. How are you guys? We're great. Doing well. Doing good. Good. Got a, Got something you'd like to discuss, sir? Yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about, um, you know, obviously, you know, Tyler Duffy was really important tonight in the sixth inning, and – Dobnik, like you guys mentioned, was really important too. But the one thing that I, I really noticed tonight was the Twins taking much better at bats. Their approach was so much better tonight. And I think like Nick talked about, that was partially having Polanco in the lineup. It was having Arias in the lineup. You know, you, you might see them go 0 for 4 or 1 for 4 or whatever the case may be, but it's the at bats. It's having patience. It's fouling pitches off and making the opposing pitcher throw more pitches. It's you know, in the first inning, um, you know, showing showing the opposing or showing the guys behind him in the lineup what the pitchers got that night. I just think that's so important. And you noticed it last night when he wasn't in the lineup, when Arias and Polanco weren't, that they didn't really take good at bats. Mm -hmm. They were flying. They were hitting ground balls, first and second pitches. They were, you know, they, they were really impatient. They didn't have a great approach. And tonight, you know, Polanco laid down a bunt, and I thought that was I thought that was a great play. So, I just really noticed. You know, the big thing I noticed was that uh, you know the approach tonight was much better, and it seems like when the Twins have a better approach in games, they tend to they tend to win. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think it's a good point. Polanco, Polanco and Arise are definitely bring a different sort of ability to work the plate and a work account, almost in the same way Nelson Cruz does. Uh, that they you know, they will they will make you work one way or the other. They're not just going to swing at whatever they've got, uh, swing at you know a, a fairly decent strike. They want they want to get the pitch the, that they want to get, and they're not afraid to lay off other stuff, um, and or take the ball the other way, or take what the pitcher gives them. And it was nice to see that they also did this against Brady Singer tonight, uh, who's been pretty good against uh, them so far this year. So uh, that's also probably a a good sign. And, and you know. Uh, uh, Lamont Wade also uh, sort of a patient, uh, patient work, workman like at bat person. So having a number of those guys in the lineup is maybe a little bit of a switch 
uh, tonight than from what we saw certainly last night. Yeah. Cody, your thoughts? I mean, we've, we've tried to diagnose what's up with this offense a lot, but it does seem like on these nights where they're able to score more runs, the, the quality of the at-bats is very noticeable, um, you know, it's, and maybe there's a little over-aggressiveness with some of these games where they're just running through at-bats so quickly and kind of going down. Um, is that kind of, kind of your perception as well? Yeah, I th it absolutely is. I think the big difference between this year and last year is last year you would see some good at-bats. I mean, you'd, we saw tons of good at-bats last year, of course, but – um, I mean, last year they were looking to they were looking to to jump on guys' first pitch. They were getting pitches to do that with. Um, and I mean, obviously they set the home run record. I think maybe I, I have no information to back this up, but I think maybe this year teams just aren't aren't letting them do that anymore. You know, I, I don't think they're going to give them a cookie on the first pitch. And I think it's it's it might be a little bit of a learning curve for some guys to. To, to realize that and, and say, I'm not going to swing at this first pitch and roll it over and maybe work the count a little bit and wait for that pitch to come in on the second, third, fourth pitch instead of the first one like last year. I think that's kind of been the big difference. And I think that um, you can see it in the games where they score five, six, seven runs that the whole lineup just kind of looks a lot more patient um, and they wait for those pitches. Um, and I, that was definitely the difference tonight, in my opinion. I just took a look. Sure. Brady Singer in the first two starts versus the Twins held the Twins to a 636 OPS against before tonight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a young guy. Yeah, he's a young guy. Right. Yeah. Right. That's right. That, that, well, that might, yeah, but you see, this is the third time they've seen him. They'd already seen him twice, and they still don't see him again really and well. again. <laughs> and again and again and again and again. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was good. That's been the yeah, story nice. lately. The Royals and the Brewers again and again and again. So um, it'll be nice but to this, move but on. But tomorrow will be the last teams. one. Yeah, tomorrow's the last Correct, game with yeah. the Royals. That's yes, it. We then it's again. on to Cleveland for a huge series. Uh, right. C-Twin, I see your hand raised. Uh, if you want to unmute yourself and speak up, you're welcome to ask a question or share a thought. C-Twin? Okay, well, if, if you choose to, I'll keep you in there first. C-Twin's got a self-muted there. That's the problem. Yeah, so self-muted. So if you hit unmute, uh, you can... Scrolling to the bottom. Okay. Um, so I do want to, we got to take the last poll here um, on the uh, most obscure words. Um, I, I like, I'm just disappointed with myself because I was so <laughs> unambitious and lame. I said old fashioned beat down. Um, John, I think I heard you drop a sidecar. Was that, uh, was that I your had word? sidecar and I got the grasshopper off a hot skillet one for some of those uh, <laughs> shot up the middle. Uh, I did. Okay. I, and I Cody, did you have one? Okay, I was wondering. I was like, it was very <laughs> subtle if you did it. <laughs> so I was, I was gonna, I was gonna make, a, I was gonna make a comment on Sano's improved defense at first since he doesn't have that boilermaker anymore. But I completely spaced it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys can vote on which one you like. They're the best. Um, a lot of good questions today. A lot of great inter, uh, interaction here in the chat. I'm trying to follow along, but you guys are just, you guys are just cruising. Obviously, I think people are feeling pretty energized about this game. Um, so let's just wrap up here by talking a little bit about what's on deck for tomorrow. Uh, the, the final game of the season against the Kansas City Royals, uh, the rubber match of this three-game set at Kauffman Stadium. Um, wow, John with a wipeout. Oh, I got one vote. Okay, but yeah, he absolutely <laughs> blew this one away. Uh, All right. so, so good job with that, with that sidecar mention there, uh, Mr. Bonus. I'm sorry that I was so pathetic. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to pop up real quick here the uh, – at Twins Daily, we always have a, a game recap that goes up right after the game ends. Um, tonight's comes to us courtesy of Thierres Rebelo, uh, who's one of our very fine writers uh, coming from Brazil. Uh, always fun to get his perspectives on Major League Baseball. And uh, he, uh, so we, you're always going to find this bullpen usage spreadsheet at the bottom of these game recaps, which I find extremely useful. Gives you a very good idea of what the bullpen situation is going to be like the following day. Here, as you can see, uh, Danny Coulomb, who just, just got called up today. We didn't even touch on that, actually. A little bit of bad news today. Jake Odorizzi going on the IL as well as Zach Littell. They're going to both be out for at least the next 10 days. Homer Bailey goes to the 45-day IL. He's going to be out until mid-September, at least. It's looking increasingly like his first and possibly only season with the Twins is going to be pretty much a wash, uh, which is unfortunate because he looked really good in that first start. Yeah. Uh, but Colu uh, Coulomb comes in, throws 32 pitches, did a nice job uh, taking care of those last two innings. Uh, so the Twins weren't able, weren't forced to dig in too much. Uh, Duffy and Clippard pitching today. I wouldn't be surprised if Clippard's available tomorrow because he had several days off. But, you know, you got Romo, Rogers, Whistler, 
Um, I think tomorrow's Whistler's a full starting game. Now. Yeah, yeah. Whistler starting is what Seth just put in the chat. So yeah, so I'm starter. I'm assuming it's going to be the old Whistler for an inning or two, and then Devin Smeltzer. Um, and I didn't see who's pitching for the Royals, so I'm not sure. I don't know if any of you guys know, but how are we feeling about another bullpen game tomorrow? And uh, the Twins trying to get one more here at Kauffman Stadium. Uh, John, let's start with you. Well, I mean, what I like about it is that now we're saving uh, Maeda for for Cleveland, right? Uh, you know, Cle- the, 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 I would say that, it, you know, well, it's not an ideal situation for tomorrow. That means we're going to see, uh, we think, my Ada and maybe Rich Hill uh, in the Cleveland game. And that uh, that's something I'm, I'm kind of looking for. And, and I, I presume Barrios would be coming back on Wednesday. Uh, that, that would be his fifth day as well. So, um, you know, I, I don't love having another bullpen game, especially as much as we've seen this bullpen work over this last week. This has been a tremendously tough week. For, it started with a doubleheader on Saturday, uh, high leverage innings on Sunday, uh, overtime game on Tuesday or I mean, extra innings game on Tuesday, uh, bullpen game on Monday. I mean, it was just, it went on and on and on, right? But uh, yeah, I, I guess I can't disagree with if you're going to have to have a bullpen game at one point here, and it kind of feels like they're going to need to, uh, give my in an extra day of rest, give Hill an extra day of rest, and save them all for the Indians. Yeah, it's going to be, as, as Devlin mentioned, it's going to be Maeda Hill and Barrios going against Cleveland. So really, those are the top three starters the Twins have right now. It's, of course, not including Dobnak, who's going to be unavailable. Um, and the Twins have done well in the bullpen games. Um, so setting up for that series, uh, it'd be nice to get a win tomorrow. There's a chance if they lose that they're not going to be in first place when they head into Cleveland because uh, the Indians are only a half game back. Cody, what's, what's your thoughts on the game tomorrow, and how do you feel the Twins are setting up for the big Cleveland series? Yeah, like I said, I want to be greedy with the offense. I want to see just a game that the offense puts away tomorrow. I think that's our best chance. Um, I think I like Whistler against the top of their order. If I was a betting man, I'd probably put a few dollars on uh, seeing a few sliders from him to, to start off the game. Uh, hopefully he can go through two and I guess just take it from there. It'll probably, you know, you'll probably see kind of a hodgepodge of guys. And uh, I'd like to see him just just be able to be able to save all the the top bullpen arms for, for Cleveland, you know, that's, that's gotta be the goal tomorrow. And uh, I think they're starting a lefty again tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember who, but um, I, uh, I think that's a good opportunity. Another good opportunity for the offense to make a comeback against uh, what's been kind of an abysmal season against left-handed pitching. So yeah, it's Bubik. So, Bubik yeah, is starting yeah. again tomorrow. They got okay. to earlier. This so, year. yeah, I mean, Kansas City's going to have all their bullpen arms going. They're going if they're up late, they're going to they're going to try and shut it down. Um, I think I think the Twins are going to try and avoid having to use any of their top arms. So I think I think the offense has got to put it away. I think that's what it comes down to. The other thing significant about getting through tomorrow's game is that that's their tenth game in ten days. Well, except that they ended up having the doubleheader, so really it's their tenth game in nine days. Right, and they've got ten more in ten days afterwards. So this gets them halfway through their toughest long everyday stretch of the season and hopefully then you know September has a few more off days and hopefully by then we'll also see some of these uh, injuries uh, start to fade away and get some guys healthy particularly uh, we'd like to see Josh Donaldson get some reps in before uh, you know, the, the playoffs begin it doesn't doesn't feel like it but a like a week from Tuesday's the trade deadline and b uh, the playoffs begin five weeks from Monday so I mean, it is it is here. It is on. It is around the corner. We are in the stretch run right now. Yeah, it's it's grind time. Uh, so it's all about coming up big and getting those W's. Speaking of which, uh, John, as our uh, winning three two of the three polls, you are our post game poobah tonight. Uh, Cody gets one. Uh, your, your humble host gets zero, deservedly so. Um, so good job, good job on the the, uh, the contest here tonight, and uh, great insights, guys. Um, so we got a big stretch coming up here, big big games all all ahead. Uh, it's a tight race. Uh, we're getting moving up on September, as John mentioned. Trade deadline coming. Michael Pineda returned almost a little over a week. That will be very welcome with the injuries in the rotation. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm excited. No show, no show tomorrow, right, John? Nope, no post show game tomorrow. Pint. Yep, post game pint. No, no post game pint tomorrow. Well, thank you okay. both for being my punching bags today. That was good. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, you're more than welcome. So you can always go to <laughs> postgamepint.com, uh, find the latest episode uh, on YouTube, as well as find the podcast link. I always like to recommend that people subscribe, check it out, listen the next morning. You can kind of get caught up on all the conversation around the previous night's game before uh, watching the one for that day. Um, and we'll be sure to update that with upcoming episodes for the next week if those are coming. So uh, thank you so much. A lot of great participation from the crowd today. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, it was a fun chat. Uh, and I'm very excited. Cody, any last words before we sign off, man? Go Twins. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> all right. John, John, you got anything else to say here before, uh, before I get ready? No, I'll just go with you. I'll go with Win Twins as well. Thanks very much yeah. for hosting tonight, Nick. And Cody, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Nick. All right. yep. Thank you, guys. Take care, everyone. Have a great Saturday night.